Welcome back to something relaxing. A hard disk tear down. Just something to pass the time until I get some more part for my full fly-by-wire electric outboard project. Card here, link in the description. I teared down the last hard disk about half a year ago. Card here, link in the description. And I teared down the last server hard disk several years ago. Another card here, another link in the description. And I never teared down before a two and a half inch server hard disk. Anyway, more links to hard disk teardowns in the description. And now let's get cracking. Enjoy! What we have here is a Seagate Enterprise Performance 15,000 RPM HDD with a serial attached SCSI interface and 600 gigabytes of capacity. And I already mentioned that, two and a half inch. If I decoded that production date here correctly, then it was made in July 2020. So it survived aboutish five years. It came out of a RAID array of 8 disks and one of the disks in the RAID array already died about two years ago. And a third disk, according to the smart diagnostics, <clears throat> doesn't feel so well either. And of course, it's a product of China. And if you add up the voltages and the amps here, it consumes at most 11 watts. To the best of my knowledge, nobody makes a 15,000 RPM 2.5 inch Enterprise HDDs anymore. And I guess the reason is these things died like flies. Anyway, let's have a look at the other side. The PCB covers most of the back side. If you look at a three and a half inch HDD, it only covers about, well, 20 to 25 percent. Uh, but then in both cases, the total area of the PCB is of course the same because that's the space you need for an HDD controller PCB. But now, without further ado, let's take that thing apart and I'm using here a Philips size 0. Okay, that was easy. Some insulation, foam, foil here, and yeah, let me zoom down. So we have here the connectors for the head assembly, and here, well, uh, that's just flat flex glued in, and here's the connector for the BLDC spindle motor. And here on these two chips, we have thermal pads that press against these areas of the aluminum body for cooling purposes, of course. We'll have a closer look at the PCB later on. For the back side, I'm using a Torx size 6. That's not a screw. And of course, there are always some hidden screws somewhere. Okay, double sealed hidden screws. That's another torque size. Yeah. That's also another torque size. No wonder they didn't make money <clears throat> with these things if they have to use all these different screw sizes. Wait. 
Uh, let me find uh, the right Torx for these two screws. That seems to be a Torx number seven. Yeah. And that is hopefully a Torx number five. Yes. And now we should be able to take that thing apart. Ah. Uh, just a sec. And here we are. So, no surprises on the inside. We have here a little air filter package and on the other side there should be, yeah, there it is, a little breathing hole. And, uh, yeah, note a little bit of mu metal here to do some magnetic shielding for, yeah, the platters itself, I guess. Otherwise, it looks like a normal HDD. We have the head assembly here. We have the magnets here for the head assembly arm to be actuated. Uh, we have our platter stack here with the BLDC motor for the spindle in the middle. And we have a little pad here to catch and filter out any sputter that comes off the discs, any dirt or so. Now let me find the right Torx for all these screws. I'm back to Torx number six. We'll see what that holds in. The Park position assembly for the hat. Okay, smaller torques. Do you see any more? Yeah, it's small and my hands are big. I'm sorry for that. And it's all very reflective. <laughs> And I can take the platters out, just like that. Well, not quite. They should come out. Okay. Let's continue with the magnet first. Hmm. Seems there is another screw. Of course, there are more screws. Why shouldn't there be more screws? Still talks number six. Okay, and while we're at it, I guess talks number five. The connection here for the head cable could lighten up things a little bit okay but now this should come out and apart i mean it's strong magnets as always and this should head assembly should also lift out but it doesn't, because there's one more screw. Jesus. And this is again, Torx number five, six, seven, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I'm wrong. This could be a number eight. Yeah, Torx number eight. So far, we had five different types of, oh, damn. Ah, yeah, here it goes. Five different types of screws in that thing. And here comes the head with the magnet. We'll have a closer look at the head in a second, but it, it's really, really tiny. 
Okay. And why is that thing not lifting out? Ah, here it is. The connector for the head assembly. We saw that already from the other side. And now I should be able finally to... That's it. That's it. 600 gigabytes on two tiny platters. Ha! Huh. And here you have the heads. So basically two heads for each platter. So only 150 gigabytes per platter site. And here's a PCB. Absolutely nothing on the back side as we have seen. Uh, that's the heart of the operation. You can see here the differential pairs going to the serial attached SCSI connector and more differential pairs going to the head connector. This is probably some kind of memory. I have no idea what these are. We will see. And here that's close to the motor connector. That's the motor controller. There's also a little inductor here and a, a big diode, more inductors. Yeah, definitely the motor controlling stuff. Datasheet wise, that PCB is a bummer. Anyway, the brain of the operations with all these differential pairs is a Marvel I1162-B0. And no, I couldn't find any data sheet. Maybe it's a custom ship for Seagate. Who knows? It's supported by that Nanya NT5CC128M16IP-DI 2 GB DDR3 SD RAM. And on the other side, uh, here is its other edge. These are two IS25 WPO16 1.8 volt serial flash memory chips, 133 MHz SPI and also Quad IO QPI DTR. So these are advanced SPI modes. Uh, 16 megabits each. I had to turn and tilt the PCB a little bit so we can read, uh, kind of read, the markings on the motor controller. It's a Smooth Viking 30 series 78069FSG. And yeah, no data sheet either. Maybe also a custom job for Seagate. Close to the connector, we find a 7615, which is, <clears throat> I guess, not a 15 volt linear regulator, but it is some kind of linear regulator, I guess. Maybe that's meant to be 1.5 volts and through the resistor network here at its reference ground input, we pull that up to the 1.8 volts. That's obviously needed uh, by the brains of the operation. And this looks like another linear regulator. Uh, let's try to zoom in. Well, <clears throat> it's an AM, AM, AMAM, 553, no data sheet either. And here we have a 232 RMS. Uh, from the looks of it, also some kind of a linear regulator. So yeah, big power rails here with decoupling or filtering capacitors. Hmm, interesting. And that's it. Probably three linear voltage regulators here at the connector where the power comes in, an SD-RAM and two flash chips for the brains of the operations, and a motor controller. And that's it for today. Till next time, bye.